Hello, welcome back to ADSR Pro with me, Mike Smith, on creating a track from scratch. So this is the final part. Uh, I think we're just probably going to talk through maybe a few concepts uh, within the track and answer a couple of questions that people have raised. Uh, so first of all, I'll start with the sidechain. Now, the reason I sidechain like this and this method, I know there is third party plugins uh, and things that sort of sidechain for you on a track. The reason I do this uh, mainly because one from that one sidechain kick, I can trigger. Let's turn it on so we can see where it is. Uh, there we go. There's my sidechain kick. So the beauty of this for me is I can actually send this kick to eight different groups simultaneously. Uh, I don't always use a kick either. Sometimes I use a hi-hat and let the compressor do the work. So what I mean by this is, as normal, I'm sending a kick drum to my um, compressor. In this case, it's the Pro C uh, on the bass group. So let's just solo. Let's just move that one out of the way. Let's get to a point. Let's just solo the bass and the side chain trigger. So there you can hear it working. Uh, but with using the attack and release and the ratio on the threshold, obviously now I can sculpt the amount of side chain. Whereas I think a lot of the side chain compressors or the side chain uh, effects that you put on a channel strip, you don't have as much control. So depending on the signal going in, in our case a kick, I can now. Uh, completely change the the way in which the compressor acts that's why I do it like this and like I said it allows me to send um, the same side chain to multiple different channels um, other than that you know everybody has their own way of working this works for me uh, I can visually see what's happening um, I prefer it so that, that's the only reason I do it like this uh, you can do it however you see fit uh, like I say using third-party plugins or yeah, however you want. So I hope that's answered it uh, a little bit with regards to the side chain. So there you go. Let's just. I've got a quick attack, so it's the side chain's kicking in straight away, and the release is releasing immediately. Let's slow it down a little bit. The other reason, actually, for using this side chain like this, uh, it allows me to do automation of the side chain. Uh, which yeah you can probably do on your channel as well but again it's just uh, I much prefer it so coming into the breakdown here you can see what I'm doing is I'm actually reducing the volume of the sidechain kick not that you can hear the kick obviously um, so let's just open up the it's actually not on the bass it's on the pads of that one I believe so there you can hear the sidechain working and there, but it's getting less and less. And you can visually see there, very little side chain happening. That basically means the pads are opening up. So there you can see it ducking quite a lot visually and you can hear it. And as you can hear, it's getting less and less. So in the breakdowns, it allows for my pads to open up or my synths or my leads or whatever. Again, this is all from one kick and I can do so much uh, different automation. It just makes sense for me to, to do it that way. Again, you know, it's I like to have control of um, as many elements uh, as possible from one source. So again, like I said, each to their own. Um, so that's that. Hopefully that's covered that. Uh, with regards to the K14 aspect, uh, what I mentioned was, let's get it to a section. What I said was I, I always work to the K14 meter. I have actually turned my kick up a little bit in this project, but uh, normally what I'd do is I'd, I'd level my kick to zero dB. And then as I'm adding elements to the track, it'll start going into the yellow like this. So if I actually change this back now to the digital scale, you'll see there I've got um, so much headroom. I've got you know a, another 
10, 11 dB of headroom there before I reach digital zero on clipping. Um, so the beauty of this is it leaves loads of space. So as I start bringing elements in, let's turn a few bits on. So that's with all the elements in there. And you can see I've still got eight, eight dB of headroom. And this is where I bring the limiter in to bring the gain up. So I won't put that on full just yet. So if I go back to the K14 meter, basically it was mentioned that I was peaking in my limiters and, and going into the red. Um, like I said, on the K14 scale, that's more than acceptable because digital zero is actually up here at 14. So that's why I use the K14 meter. For me, it sets um, a standard formula, if you like, or a standard place for me to start every single track. So I know that I'm always working at the same volume and at the same level. One, it's good for my ears when I'm in the studio. Uh, it means I can work at a quiet level and work for hours and hours and hours without my ears getting as tired. And also, like I said, it allows me to have loads of headroom so I know that all my elements uh, uh, will sit right in the mix and then I can bring it up with the um, invisible limiter. So other things I didn't touch on uh, really whilst making the track was the visualizer, which I always have on my master channel. Again, the reason I have this is because I can solo Let's go into this section. Um. So you can see there, I can solo any element of the track and I can see where it sits in the mix. So for instance, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, bottom end in, in those pads. I could now go in to the mixer and what have we got on there? We must have an EQ. No, that's my compressor. That's a simple one. So for instance, I could put a Pro Q on there and just roll this bottom end off. Just to free up a um, little bit of space in the mix. You can see there now I've got a much sharper curve dropping off leaving all this bottom end for the kick and the bass to fit. Could maybe even roll a little bit more out of that. So there you go, let's leave that there. It's just a really handy tool to have uh, because any elements in the track, so for instance, maybe the drums. Let's open the mixer back up and the visualizer. Let's turn the kick off. So there you can see the perk and you can actually see there's a, a lot of rumble in the bottom of that percussion. So again, let's open up the mixer go on to the percussion group let's put an EQ let's close that one down there we go so there you can see all this rumble that's unwanted noise really so you can see what we've done there now is we've created a, another void a massive gap in this bottom end so again, the kick and the bass drum will, will fit so much better in the mix. We've sculpted our sound to fit better within the mix. So there you go, that, that's, that's basically it. Like I said, uh, it's not a, a completed track really uh, it's just a, a small overview of how to construct and build a track uh, there's probably in my videos here maybe an hour and a half worth of tutorials and i've probably spent another hour in between the tutorials tweaking things and adding things like i said i would so a couple of hours in a track to be honest is nothing you know i'd, I'd put days and days within a track so 
Um, yeah, there you go. I hope you found these informative. And again, like I said, if you have any questions or you'd like uh, more things explaining to the best of my abilities, then please get in touch, drop me a message. And don't forget, if you like what I do, subscribe to my channel. So until next time, thank you very much. Bye bye. A D S R. Proud.